So I'm going to let you introduce Alan. Please give her an applause. Thank you, Victoria. I should say that was my former job, uh, but this, looking around this room, it's, it's a little bit similar, actually. Um, well, I'm honored to be uh, sharing this stage with the great presentations that came. Um, what I'd like to talk to you about is the first science and engineering festival uh, here in Cambodia, national level event. Um, we're running it in partnership with the USAID, Ministry of Education, and the NGO I work for, which is Golden West. Um, this event is to celebrate STEM. Okay, so just briefly touching on the problem. Okay, so in Cambodia, uh, how many engineers have you met? Cambodian engineers. Yeah, a few. Yeah, a few. We work with some too. We have them in our office, and that's fantastic, but not enough. Not enough engineers, not enough scientists. Oh, okay. Okay, why is that up there? Because that guy is super cool. Uh, but great quote by Dean Kamen, uh, a society gets what it celebrates, right? We celebrate pop stars, we celebrate musicians, uh, and you need to celebrate science and technology, engineering, and math if that's what you want your society to be fruitful with, right? Okay, so there's a super cool guy, right? The coolest guy in his class. Yeah? Um, thank you very much. Thank you. That's me and my robot, right? Uh, so that's 1997. So I'm a product of science programs, outreach programs in the United States. I'm not a scientist or engineer, uh, but I work with them every day and in the field of innovation. So here is what a lot of Cambodians see in their everyday life, right? You go out to the provinces, this is where a lot of Cambodia lives. And they might think there's no science here, but there's every kind of science here, right? And so part of what we're trying to do is generate this excitement and get the Cambodian youth to see that science is around them every day. And here on the street, it's even easier because you have technology. And, and we heard earlier that a lot of people associate uh, science with technology. Uh, but here, it's everywhere around us, right? And so at the festival, what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to tie science to things that they see in everyday life, right? OK, things like this, right? The shampoo they use, the water pumps in a rice paddy, uh, everything, their bodies. Uh, I mean, you can tie science to everything, and that's what, you know, will bring it home for these guys, right? And of course, the mobile phone, their favorite, right? Okay, so here we have a Honda Goldwing, amazing machine, right? Middle-aged guys and girls with a little thing, microphone, and all that. $20,000, two-liter engine, uh, pretty, pretty amazing feat of engineering, right? And it can tow that trailer. So for those of you who've been in Cambodia a while, that's not very impressive, right? Because, uh, yeah, I took this on Highway 5, right? Now that's impressive. And Cambodians are innovators, right? They solve problems all the time. And if you've ever seen that water dripping over the engine, they're solving a problem there, right? That's a 250cc engine pulling all that. What they don't know is that latent heat transfer, right? But we can tie those things together, right? And that's what we're trying to do here with the first Cambodian Science and Engineering Festival. Okay, so it's comprised of three main parts. One is the Science Roadshow. We're going to go around to schools. We're going to get them excited about science. We're going to show them a little bit, and we're going to arrange logistics. The next is the Young STEM Pioneers. It's a two-day workshop before the main event. We're going to bring kids in from the public school system. Okay, moving on. Okay, why the festival format? Um, the festival format is not something we invented. It's actually uh, started in the 80s in Edinburgh, but it's about making science fun and accessible. It's not a fair, there's no competition, right? It's celebrating science, right? And that's where the fun comes in, right? You put it alongside music, you make it interactive, kids have a great time, right? Yeah, so it's still fun. I'm not that much fun, so we're recruiting volunteers to add fun, okay? Um, so accessible is the other part of that, right? Science is not on a pedestal. Again, it, I hear it time and time again, even talking to uh, you know, people involved in, in this sector here, that it should be the gifted kids that do this or the gifted kids that do that. But that's not who does most of the science, right? It's just normal people who have an interest. OK, that went really fast. OK, that's not me, um, but that's a super cool guy from Singapore, right? And, and the Science Roadshow, that's what it's going to be about, right? Just having fun and getting out there and showing the kids just some things they can do in their everyday life that are not expensive and, and that are fun. It's also about motivating the teachers, right? Um, a lot of the teachers want to, don't know how. Uh, okay, so Young STEM Pioneers, again, this is, this is bringing the kids in for this two-day workshop. 
what we're really trying to do is uh, sow the seeds with, with these kids so when they go back to their schools, they become the advocates for this. They're super excited about science, right? Okay, so it's going to be two days, and the product of what they do is actually going to be displayed at the main event. Okay, so what you, hear see, what you see here is the U.S. Science and Engineering Festival in Washington, D.C. Uh, I think it's only been running for about three years. We're lucky in that the founder of this, uh, Mr. Larry Bach, is actually on our advisory board and is uh, interested in, this, in our festival here. Of course, ours probably won't look as glamorous, but uh, we'll do our best. So at the main event, there's also going to be workshops, right? There's going to be tools for teachers. And this is going to be about getting the teacher trainers in there and giving them tools, uh, not expensive things, just things they can do uh, with what they have in their environment. And then the innovation sessions, right? Getting innovators, uh, such as the presenter we had earlier, to, to, to mentor these kids through just thought experiments. And then, of course, hands-on science, getting dirty, right? Doing things with their, with their hands. And uh, you can see some good examples there. And there's just tons of it. I mean, just YouTube science experiments. There's all kinds of fun stuff you can do just with household items. OK? So how to get involved? I guess I'm at the end here. Uh, the reason I'm here at Nerd Night is this is a great resource for this, you guys, right? Uh, if you guys want to volunteer, if you guys want to exhibit, if your organizations want to get involved with this, we're at the very early stages right now. And we want you guys. We want you guys to help out. Yeah. So that concludes my very brief presentation. Thank you, Alan.